So in my book, I talked about when I saw this at the cross, how there would be a time that Jesus was going to begin to turn the church upside down in this subject related to women. Women are, it's, it's, it's not just about women, and that's important to understand. Um, women are a prophetic picture of the church. And we know Paul talks about this in Ephesians. He, he, when he's actually talking about husbands and wives, and he says, I speak concerning a mystery, and it's Christ and the church. And he, he's explaining to us how women are a prophetic picture of the church, and men, men carry something in the nature of God very differently than women. You know, men are called to radiate the, the bridegroom, to the earth, to prophesy through who they are, you know, and fathers and, and women carry the nature and, and the, the prophetic declaration of the church, which, you know, goes all the way back to the garden. It's the reason that um, Satan deceived Eve in the garden. That same argument, that same fight is still going on today. And I'm, uh, talking about that in my next book, uh, Returning to Eden, I hit a little bit of this topic about that has been so fascinating for me with the Lord to actually get into the hatred. I mean, Satan hates women because they represent or a prophetic picture. I mean, he hates men too. But women are the life bringers, and they are a picture of the church, a prophetic picture of the church. And so this attack, you know, it's like when you always know when the church is maturing and growing, uh, and, and we like we go from glory to glory, and we're in this place right now. We, we so misunderstand the spirit of glory. I mean, if we understood it more, we wouldn't pray so much for it. Uh, I mean, we want it, but ouch. Um, glory comes and it confronts everything that's not of God. It, the light exposes the darkness. And, um, and we have been in, an, in, a, in a place of increased glory that is bringing us forward into maturity. This is what's happening with the church. And as it's happening, things have to get confronted. Things have to get exposed in order for us to grow and move forward. And Satan is always right there waiting to attack, you know, waiting to take advantage of our vulnerability and our weak, you know, times. And um, corporately, we're in that place as a body of Christ. And man, do we see the hatred and the attack against women. I, I um, haven't watched it yet, but it's like my, on my next like watch list is um, on uh, Matt Walsh uh, did a, a documentary called What is a Woman? And... Um, you know, we can see, and I, I can't wait to watch it. I've seen bits and pieces of it. But he's tackling this issue of, uh, really, in my words, the attack on women. Um, how men want to become women. And, and it really what it's doing is it's causing the, it's degrading women and the, the identity and the existence of women. That's one thing that's happening, you know, um, in this this attack that women are under. Um, and he hates, he hates women. He wants to corrupt women. He wants to seduce women because if he, it, it's all about the image, you know? And, the, and again, 
Satan is so jealous. Uh, sorry, jealous isn't the correct word. Envious. <laughs> He's so envious of us, of the body of Christ, of the bride of Jesus. I don't, I've, I've seen some of that envy. I've tasted some of it um, coming towards me. I can't imagine the depth of his hatred and envy um, against us and what we carry and who we are and having the image of God. We carry the image of God and he wants to corrupt that. He wants to seduce the bride into a place where he can tear down and corrupt. And again, that's what's happening, you know, with this gender identity crisis. Um, and get us to take on his nature. At the end of the day, that's the goal. He, he, he wants to corrupt. I mean, the nature of Satan is to corrupt. He hates life. He hates light. He hates love. He wants to twist, distort, and corrupt all of that. His nature, think of that. Anything that attempts to corrupt, you can go, that's Satan. I mean, that is his agenda. It is to corrupt, to twist, to steal, kill, and destroy. And, and his nature, I, and one of the ways which was really offensive to me at first, that the Lord's been teaching me um, about this spirit and this nature that is coming against the church is actually through psychology, which was a little bit offensive at first because I grew up in that and I'm kind of like, uh. Um, but for the last several years, I've been studying on um, psychopaths, narcissism, um, and getting very deep in it, almost to, you know, the degree where sometimes every night I was reading or studying about it um, by the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And then encountering people and seeing situations, and he's been teaching me and going, I want you to see this because what you're seeing and what you're experiencing is going to only increase as an attack against the body of Christ as time, as time goes on. And, um, and I feel like we need to really pay attention to this right now because he's flashing a red light and, um, and going, look, here's what's going on, but here's how I need you to respond. Anytime there's a word from God, anytime, I'm, I'm not going to get off topic on this, but anytime there's a true word from God. There's always something from his heart telling us how to respond. It's he's kind to do that. You know, he doesn't just give information. He, he wants us to grow and mature and know what to do. And, um, and so, you know, with the exposure of all this stuff that's going on, there's this red light in the church. I'm not even talking about, you know, um, anything outside of the church. It's certainly happening there as well. But in the church, it is astounding to me, just in the last few weeks, the exposure that is coming related to pastors and leaders who have been exploiting women. And it's the same nature. It's a narcissistic, predatory um, spirit that hates women wants to use them and um, abuse them because he hates them. And, um, and again, it's important to, to, number one, keep our hearts pure, to not, to stand for justice, to speak for justice, and to call it out and to expose it. We're called to do that. When he tells us to speak, we speak. We're silent when he tells us to be silent. We wait for the right time. But in doing it, it's so, so, so important that our hearts are not in alignment with the accuser because Satan would love, he loves to 
stir up trouble, bring us into something and get us offended so that we can start to point the finger and accuse from a wrong spirit. And when we do that, we're coming into agreement with Satan and we're taking on his nature. And he loves that. He wants us. There, there's a war over the identity, over the nature that we carry. And Satan wants us to carry his nature. He's an accuser. He loves to pass judgment. He's critical. You know, he's without mercy. And, and so we cannot afford to carry that in our hearts. I, I, I've seen it again. I talked about this in my book. I've seen the bride at the return of Jesus and how she was made. She was formed in perfect love and all of hell was hated, hated her and was doing. That was what hell was terrified of was this mature bride walking in mature love. And, um, and that is the conflict that we're in. And I, you know, I hear the Lord saying, no, see it, feel it, you know, grieve over it, but do not move from the place of love. And what does that mean? And what does that look like is where we're growing and how we need to grow, especially if you're a woman. You know, and men to you. And I, again, I want to say something about that. Um, we have, we have got to, you know, um, it, for example, last night when my daughter got hit significantly, it was the same spirit. I mean, it was like, it just came all out. I got hit, she got hit. And I'm going to share a little bit about me, but you know, I said to her, we were praying and we were praying we bless our enemies. We bless them. This is what Jesus said to do. We bless you. We bless you. It guards our heart. It protects our hearts. We pray for them. We bless them. And we said, keep us in perfect love. We choose love. We choose you, you know, and then have zero offense. That doesn't mean the grief is gone. The pain is gone. It doesn't even mean the anger is gone. There is a righteous anger and yet we need to be seated in love before we open our mouths, you know? And it's a way we stay in his nature. We're protected and we're safe. This is so, so, so important always, but in this time, and especially as these things increase, and they're going to. I mean, Jesus told us they would. And so knowing how to be seated in love, move in love, function in love, is so essential. And I'm telling you, in this um, fight and in this argument, there will be a war against love. And I'm going to, I've seen this in these situations where, and the enemy will twist it. He'll twist what love is. He'll, 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 he'll twist it to silence you, to say, you should have mercy on me. You know, I mean, he's a religious fanatic and he will twist everything. I've seen it. I've seen people function in that. I've seen, you know, um, people use that under the influence of this spirit to manipulate um, other people. So that is not what I'm saying.